where ahead of the uh, Luton match. Paul, uh, your former <coughs> club coming coming to Wadden Road uh, this weekend. Yeah. Looking forward to that? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the game, yeah. Um, they're coming in really good form, you know, big team, League Two, so yeah, of course I know all about Luton and the great fan base that they'll have, um, but it's going to make for a really exciting game. I mean, obviously your focus is now on Cheltenham, but you must be pleased to see the progress Luton have made sort of carrying on what you started while you were there. Without a doubt, yeah, I think John Steele has done an incredible job and uh, Luton was always destined to get into the... Uh, back into the Football League. I think it took a lot longer than many expected, but it's, it's a tough league, the conference. But yeah, they're in the, in the Football League and you can only see them moving in one direction. So I'm delighted for, for the club. They are a Football League club, that's for sure. And as for you, still looking for that first home win. Any closer yeah. to getting it, do you think? I think we've been very close. I think we've, you know, uh, Rob and I are looking at the, the games this morning. I think there's only one been one game this season we've been really disappointed with in the league and that was Hartlepool you know we didn't we didn't turn up at Hartlepool and uh, we got what we deserved but in the other games have been really close you know I think we've in the five games four draws and the win um, you know we've given a really good account of ourselves and, and gone close gone close in those games so um, we, we played very well against Newport at home unlucky not to get anything and we'll need a similar performance if we're going to um, push Luton. It's been a frustrating time for the fans. They ha haven't seen a win here in Cheltenham since uh, since the Swindon match. Luton will bring, as you said, a big, strong fan base. I guess you need as many fans to come along this weekend as you can. Uh, you've even been on a, a rival radio station to my own <laughs> this week, uh, just trying to get a few more people along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ba a battle cry. Um, no, look, we're, we're sort of halfway through the season now, and um, I'm into the job uh, along with the staff. And uh, we, we're, we're quite happy with the progression, progression we've made in terms of you know, a lot of change um, and trying to get a winning mentality at the club. You're right. I mean, when we got the win at Oxford, um, I don't quite I don't think the players knew how to celebrate. It was sort of surreal. It was like, did we, did we win that or not? You know, as, as we went over to the fans. So it's you know, turning the corner and getting the wins and creating a winning mentality and getting the players to you know, really believe you know, is the next bit. But we've been very close. The games have been touch and go. And we are capable of winning games now. I feel that we're in a position now where uh, we're be becoming harder to break down, which is important. Um, and again, the, the, I think we've got the, the second worst goal difference at goals against Column. So that's a huge worry. And I think, especially when we consider we feel we've got one of the best goalies in the division, it shows you the work that's uh, that needed to be done. And I think that now the players um, are really digging in, you know, becoming more resilient. We just need to sort of keep that and turn it around into wins now. So how do you keep that resilience but then, I mean you created a lot of chances against Morecambe, didn't, didn't take them, how do you start taking those chances? Well you don't criticise players for missing chances um, because the key for me is creating them. I think if, we're, if you're a team that's struggling to create, you've got problems. We're not struggling to create at the moment, we are you know, causing teams problems. We've just got to try and get the goal, two goals up, two goals in front, which we haven't done for a long time. Um, and then you know we'll, you'll see a different Cheltenham team. I think everyone knows football's about confidence, and um, you know but the, the players are giving everything. They've they've taken to all the tasks that we've put in front of them. Uh, they are getting their rewards, you know, but not not in wins. But if you look at it in a different way, it's, it's eight league games. We've not been beaten in five of them, so and we're becoming more solid every game. How's uh, Matt Richards been in training this week? He's been excellent. He's been. Um, an excellent professional. It's the reaction that I wanted. Um, I actually called him in. Obviously, I called him in to say I was leaving him out, and then I called him back in at the start of this week to say, you know, the way he dealt with it was so professional, and <clears throat> what he put in the press, you know, is what we need. It's what's it's what's required. And I think, you know, definitely we've we've lost our way and some some direction and focus, and it's about getting that focus back, especially with our more senior players, which Matt is. But he's been he's been excellent this week. Uh, he's got to keep. Those, those standards up and you know, he'll be up for um, consideration at the weekend. Uh, Jake Gray came in uh, on loan from Crystal Palace, uh, how's, how's he settled in? Uh, very well as well, I mean it, it shows that the, the atmosphere we've got at the club in terms of uh, you know, togetherness now where Jake's been made, made really welcome by the players and he showed us in training especially on, um, on Tuesday we had some 
some games, some small sided games, and he looks really exciting. And could he possibly play this weekend? Yeah, I think so. I think you know, I try to if if you're going to bring players in, um, you want them to go into the team. You know, looked very hard at the the three lads from Liverpool, and obviously the same with Jake. And I think you know he will definitely add to what we've got here. Uh, Paul Black has has left, and he's he's gone off to America. Did you help him a bit with that? Yeah, I kicked him out the door. <laughs> <laughs> he, Black Blackie's a, a top professional, a top person as well, and I wish him all the best. He um, he, he expressed a, an interest in going to the states. I've got some good contacts there, and um, you know when Gary Smith phoned me about him, you know I gave him a, a glowing reference. I think he's just unfortunate that we've got that we had three fullbacks at, at the club. So um, we wish him well, and I say he's a great lad, and he's he's freed a little bit of money up as well, which is great. It's freed a little bit of money up finally. Um, any business in the offing then, Paul? Well, we're 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 up on the loans, so obviously you can only have five loans in a in a squad. So it's looking at permanence now, really. And I think the next week or so, you'll see uh, players maybe paid up, released. You know, uh, squads and teams shuffling their pack and. Um, that's where we've got to be ready to maybe cash in and take one or two. Um, had a good meeting last week with the board in terms of where we are and how we've done things, and um, happy with obviously how we've done things financially. Um, but anyone we bring in will have to work for the club's finances. So, but it is positive, uh, a bit more positive, and hopefully we can bring in one stroke two players. And you've had a, been having a look at some trialists. Any any of them impressed you? No, no, we. Um, not going to be taking any of the trialists, but this is, you know, this is a time where, if you know, people are put forward to us, uh, you know, there's no harm in giving them a go, especially in the reserve game. And would that be likely people who are available, free transfers? Yeah, it would have to be permanent. Yeah, so it would either be taking them to the end of the season, or if I, I really like the player, then obviously we'd look at this year and next year because obviously anything for next year doesn't affect us now in the budget. This budget is obviously. To the end of the season, which is what we've, we're looking at and working to, um, but yeah, it would be permanence now, and um, you know, to try and shape the squad not only for this season but next season as well. Paul, that's great. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Paul, well, do you have individual targets in mind? Yeah, yeah. There's three players that that we really like, um, and uh, you know, they are all in clubs at the moment. You know, sort of discussing their futures, and we're um, you know we're just waiting. So. We have had contact with with those players. Those players are, are free to talk to people, but have not really sort of sorted out their negotiations at their club. So we've just got to be a bit patient. Yeah, are they all of the same position, or is it different positions throughout the team you're of? Um, yeah, three different positions. Yeah, yeah, I'm a bit reluctant to say. Where, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So uh, I think I think it's about um, balancing the squad out, James. It's it's you know I need to be sure that we've got. The, the, the right squad in place for the second half of the season, um, you know, still working to to the budget. Yeah, if you could bring just one position in, where do you think the team needs it most? Well, I mean, maybe up front. I think maybe maybe a striker. But having said that, you know, throughout the squad now, um, we, we're going to need to strengthen in the summer. So I think <laughs> I think um, and I think it's about looking at players that, that are better than what we've got in many ways or can improve what we've got. It's no it's no good bringing in players of similar ilk or, you know, less. There's, there's, no, there's no value. You know, the, the boys here, you know, they want to they, they want to see me improve and they want to see me improve it with, with players that can come in and really help us and help them because they're putting in such a massive effort now. I mean, every training session, they're, they're a joy to work with the players now. It's, they really are up and running. Um, and you know they're taking a lot of a lot of strength from the performances, and they're desperate for wins now as well. You know, mentioned after the Morecambe game that that sort of team selection and the tactics used were a sort of a direct consequence of what Morecambe were, were playing. Is there a different plan for this week, or are you going to try and sort of get more to a settled Cheltenham eleven? I think getting getting a settled team has been really difficult. Um, not not just because of performances or results, because as I said, I think we've. We really have improved. Uh, I think it's been more injuries as well, you know, especially at the back. Uh, losing Matty Taylor at Exeter was a huge blow for us in that game uh, when we were looking solid. And then, you know, sort of Lloyd coming in. Then when Matt's back fit, 
um, and you want your captain in the team because what, what he can give us but it's about now trying to keep Matt fit really it's trying to work with Wezo, work with Matt to, to keep him on the pitch because he gives everything I mean somebody it's no coincidence that somebody like Matty you know he's he's picked up a few injuries in the last couple of years because he's given it he gives everything he gives everything in the games and, and um, we want him on the pitch so if we get him on the pitch we can get a settled back four settled back five but all the time there's players coming in and out Steve Yellett the same it's very difficult to get a settled team